Cool, so about a year ago, I think it was in April last year, we came along. We had uh, two teams running a uh, British Gas. We just started using Ember four or five months. And uh, the site at that time was a lot of legacy code. Uh, it was all server side, JSP, Java, Java stack. And since that time, we've spawned up, spawned up. Uh, five teams, they're all doing Agile, different types of Agile. Whatever the team wants to do, they'll do whatever they want. <coughs> we have five running apps at the moment. So uh, we've got the online application management app, we've got uh, energy sales app, the services sales app, the home move app, and we've also built, like this is the static content page that we have running on AM, AM6, which is a CMS system run by Adobe. And we built the header and the footer. Those are actually Ember applications that we're actually dropping on to the site. Anything functional on a static page is an Ember application. We're looking at actually migrating all this stuff into Ember Islands at the moment. So that'll be another set of Ember applications that we're actually going to be deploying onto the site. Uh, it's been fairly well received. Speed of deployment, builds, releases, uh, beta journeys, all done through the Ember application, 300 odd releases over a year. In the old days, it was one a month, if you're lucky. So we went from 12 to 300. Any slight change, as you've seen, we've actually put our prices down, like everyone else has done. So, uh, not that we're still cheap, if you see what I mean. Uh, so, the actual Ember application we're also was Bootstrap. Anything that we actually can get out of the Ember, Ember community we're using, so Ember CLI, we're actually running a bit behind the main Ember application itself, we're on 1.13. Uh, Ember data, anything that we can get out of the community we're using and, and we're trying to feed back into the community as well. As much as we can. It's a bit difficult in a corporate environment to actually send anything back because our masters above us say, Sure, you don't want to try and sell that as a separate thing. Maybe get some money out of a, out of those poor people that are trying to actually do some work. Uh, so, so this is their Ember. This is our OAM application, the front end into our website. Uses OAuth two. Uh, we've iterated multiple times over this. We're about to go 100% in about a couple of weeks on this. It was a beta application as it can see on the top of my right hand side there. It's a beta application. And we've been running against the current main site for, uh, it feels like a long time, but about six months. Trying to convince the business that what we've actually created is good, is all to do with measurement, monitoring, giving you the stats. Uh, we use Omnichir for our stuff, or Site Catalyst as it used to be called, and it's, the speed of response of the teams that actually, we're, the, the way that we're operating now is a lot faster than the other teams in the company. So they're always catching up with us. And it's, uh, it doesn't help to actually push the journeys forward, make them better, especially the beta stuff. We're using a lot of technology that we never used to use. Uh, we used to use Clicktail. If anyone's tried to use Clicktail with an SPA like these, Total nightmare. Uh, so we've purchased another product, Inspectlet, if you ever want to look at that. Brilliant tool. SPA is straight out of the box. Uh, videos, uh, heat maps, scrolled stuff, all sorts of interesting things that are uh, very useful when you're actually trying to improve a journey for a customer. Because the amount of stuff that you don't envisage when you actually the customer comes onto the site is pretty Im impressive. The six months uh, period is that a reflection of just kind of the conservative culture, or is very, very conservative. Are there any particular things that they're like holding out on, or is it just? It's like it's, it's saying like, ooh, we don't know. Maybe you want to have web chat in the main journey. Maybe you want to have this. Maybe you want to have that. Maybe you want to be able to allow our agents to actually potentially mimic a customer. We've got this functionality called uh, impersonate user. That functionality doesn't work with the way that we built this stuff at the moment. There's a way around it, but they don't want to give that to the agents, the way around, the workaround, because it's too complex for them. 
So until we build that, they don't want to go to the 100%. So uh, it's a bit annoying, because, especially because these journeys, especially the registration journey, which I'll show in a bit, is a lot faster, a lot better. We're discovering a lot of stuff when we're actually going, uh, I'm just trying to remember password now. Uh, <coughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's all right. So the application itself is we've used uh, a lot of stuff that we, and we, as we've been going along, we've been iterating along. So the first iteration that we did about, uh, must have been a year ago now, was a single fuel customer. It was just gas. And every so a couple of months, we drop in a new, new function, new customer, new, new segments. It's all using Ember data in the back end. So when we actually move across from uh, one application to the other, it's all moving around. Uh, because we're tying into the old site at the same time, we've still got to maintain functionality that goes back to the old site. So this is our old site, in effect. Trying to convince the business that this was OK was another nightmare. As they see the uplift of actually some of the journeys that we've built, that slowly disappears. Uh, so for us, as we've been going through the, our, our life with Ember and client-side applications and all the other bits and pieces that we've been doing, it's, uh, it's a total different culture that we're trying to build in the site and with the company. We still get a lot of pushback we're still trying to improve the culture of everyone else around us, but we are a small team. There's only 100 of us, sorry, in the team. In each team, we've got five scrum teams. So we've got two developers, front-end developers, a BA, a solution architect, business people. And uh, if you get a good product owner, you can see the difference in the actual way that the team works. And the actual mentality, we're going on a minimal viable product. So we're, that entire culture that we're trying to change to use Ember in a production environment under, well, customer load. So it's, we only, we've only got a couple of million of customers. This is running at 50% at the moment on the, on the site. And as I said, we're moving up to 100% very, very soon. Uh, I'm just going to go through, we've got, as I said, five applications on the site that we've actually got. And I think we came here, like, we only had two right at the beginning. So it was just quote and sale, uh, quote and home move. So let's have a quick gander. So the home move journey, and those times we've actually rewritten and restyled a journey multiple times as we've been going through the site as well. So we've had a, a total UI change since the last time we were here. So. That has also been going along at the same time. So we've had uh, the style sheets have all changed, the actual feel and look and feel of the site. Because it's all client side, style sheets, it's very easy to migrate away from one to another. We ran the two sites, A and B, together to see if any customers were actually dropping out because of our new VI. We saw that it was better, switched the one off. That would have taken a project six months, a year in the old days. In fact, we've still got a project that's still running that is uh, a migration project from five years ago that never completed. So, do you, do you find you have problems with browser support at all? Uh, yes, because we have to support IE9 still. Right. So, uh, uh, we did have a bit of a period where with the front end, it was actually dropping out. The, we actually lost a lot of uh, support. But the only people, we've got 1% of customers that use it, proper customers. The, most of those customers are actually our corporate customers, as in our company, because we've still not upgraded up to Windows 11. Right. So Windows 10, sorry, and IE 11. So that is our biggest uh, challenge is not real customers, Internal customers, yeah. and you can't say, oh, we can't support them because they are the pain in the ass that actually says sign stuff off. Right. 
Why did you ask the question? Are you, are you experiencing that yourself? Or? No, no, it's just, I was just interested. I thought okay. that would have been one of the major sticking points. So, but because, so because we, we built it so that it can actually cope with, we've actually backported it so it actually will work with IE9. So we had to because no, there's no way else that we could actually do it because a lot of the people just use IE9 internally. Does, does Ember drop support for IE? They have drop support, uh, yeah. Oh, they dropped IE8. IE8 is supported. Yes, yeah. just. Yeah, Ember makes noise to make sure that that stays around. No, no, no we're, we're supposedly we're migrating off IE9 <laughs> uh, this year sometime, maybe, if we're lucky. Uh, so this is our home move journey. Again, we've, we've migrated across from, we're still using a, a few bits and pieces from our old site in here. But the uh, corporate service, and then we got this home services stuff. <coughs> so as, as, as we're going along, it's it. Ooh, oh, there we go, we can carry on. But it's generally, it's the, we've got multiple applications all running at separate times and we're all using ABs testing all the time. The fact that we can actually put fingerprints on, the, on Ember applications, Ember CLI deployments, the speed of deployment, it's all good. There's nothing bad about the way that this stuff works. So as a, a corporate entity, and actually people actually using this stuff, it's a lot better than what we used to use. And obviously we've still got a, the old bits and pieces of the site, they're on there, and the, the changes of for us to actually use the Ember application, our initial issues, recruitment, we've got Angular guys now doing Ember, every so often the, the Angular stuff does creep in, and the Conversations that I could still build this quicker if it was Angular, could still keep coming up. But those are slowly fading away. The, the more support that you get, the more applications, the speed of actually changing. The actual summer stuff like Ember Islands, because there's such a big community, all people developing other ideas out there, it's so much quicker to actually develop stuff, especially the static things. Because, uh, you know, like the Not having fast boot, this is the discussion I was going to have. I actually have a quick word with you about fast boot and how your experiences with fast boot because I've got this problem with fast boot because it just, it just harks me back to the old days, which is server side rendering of sites in effect. And uh, the power that you get with client side is that it's pretty instantaneous and you don't have to have a huge amount of kit to actually run all this stuff so, and sessions and maintaining sessions and things like that. I may have to have a word with St Stefan and those guys about this. But that's my personal problem. The way that we split, split it up, we split, it split the site up into small applications that are pretty quick to load, pretty self-contained. And if they need to log in, you actually log in using the OAuth stuff to actually cope with that, so implicit flows and things like that. So you can cope with switching between applications. And if the application's got the token, obviously you get the data, the data's there, it pulls it in. So generally, all of our stuff that we're uh, going through at the moment, it's been pretty, pretty good. Darn good, is what I can say in an American type thing. The API that Ember Data's hitting, mm. are you gonna open that up? Uh, you know, the Bok and the API, <laughs> and what's my gas bill today? Uh, you see, that's one of our goals. It's one of my goals this year is to actually expose the API so it's, we can monetize it. Or if it's monetized, bits of it can be monetized, bits of it can be open totally. So as an identity provider, that's your first step to get your auth and identity. Mm -hmm. Then you pull the data in that you can actually give away for free. There's bits and pieces we can't give away for free, but most of it, I don't know, see, I can't see why we can't expose the APIs out. 
we're actually going through a process at the moment, if you're, or anyone's interested, we're moving away from our, all of our back-end code was all written on a legacy system, so we're trying to get off that at the moment. So we've got a project this year, if anyone Java, any Java developers, uh, we're writing, we're moving away from OSGI built into our old core system, and we're moving to Spring Boot and uh, Netflix OSS, Spring Cloud OSS to actually make it so that the microservices running on top of Kubernetes is our goal on top of that. So actually because microservices fully scalable, resilient. Kubernetes is the scheduler project. Uh, on top of, top, of, top of Docker, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it part of Core OS or related to Core OS? It's, it's Google, so it's not related, but they use it on top of the together. So we're actually, that's our, this is this year's mission. So last year's mission was front end, UI, get that out, get that easy to develop, deploy separately from the data. Now next year's mission, along with everything else that we're doing, is actually get the data in a, in a, a system that is actually fully resilient and extensible. As, as with everything with British Gas, it's money and time and effort. And politics. Uh, and coins on thing, yeah. <laughs> if they're real bitcoins, now that would be useful. I'm curious. Yeah. Having you said, I think five applications. Yes. Do you share a component between them? Yes. So we have a, a common component library that sits behind that, Sorry. and we pull those into each of the actual applications that are actually so it's deployed. Like another one that contains all your common components. Yes. Okay. I think if yeah. you look back to the, the talk from April. With yes. Vimeo, there is. I think Deepin presented a segment about, yep. about that, about the shared component library. And I think it shares the, um, the component to get compiled to a file, which literally the file is shared between the apps yes. as well. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 And that was one of the things I think they were quite interested in releasing. Yes. How's that journey going? Uh, I'll have to remind them. Actually, what I'll do is after this, if, I, if it's on the recording, what I'll do is I'll ping him. Because he's supposed to be in here today as well, but he's coming down to London tomorrow, so he can't do both days. You know, family commitments, as, as they say. So yeah, that's that's it. So we, I think we exposed something uh, forms. I think we've got put out there. I don't know how many people are using it, but it's out there as well, which we are using because we are using forms everywhere on the site. Because <coughs> that's what we do. We take data and put it into our ingest it into our backend systems. Right. I have interest no. about the energy industry because I can't, I've worked in it for a long time. That might be bigger, so <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll take it off the line. So. That's, uh, yeah, if you go down the pub afterwards, I'll, uh, I'll definitely talk about that, especially with our great pricing structure that we have for that. Uh, do you think, another question, do you think eventually all the British guys front them will be perhaps Ember? Yes. Like a single application or... Uh, so that's, that's our, our biggest issue is the amount of static data static content that we have on the site is quite big. And what we don't want to do is create a monolith because we had a massive monolith beforehand. And the beauty of having separate little applications that can actually be deployed out separately means that the different teams can all travel at different, ex at different speeds using different techniques and different deployments. If we then built one massive application that just piled everything together and deployed it all in one go, it would Potentially, we have this in a corporate thing. It's just the getting the people together to actually deploy it all in one go, and that's what we used to have. And it was a horrible mess of testing to actually get anything released. So the beauty of this is you're only testing one set of functionality. You're only testing quote. You're only testing uh, services. You're only testing home move. You're only testing OAM, and you can test the front end away from the back end separately. So we use Mirage a lot. For the, for the testing. Uh, a lot of the mock stuff that we do is we put a lot of mocking into the actual front end. So it's the, the front end and the back end are so separate, that it helps out. That's to my next question. That is yep. If you have take a, taken a look to engines and yep. engines, because precisely they are supported, you can pretty much build independent applications and yep. mount them together. All right, OK. So I'm actually using Ember engines. Ember engines. Yes. So just the idea you, your uh, main application is basically a shell, a shell, yeah. a shell with holes, 
you feed with applications and these applications can be deployed independently. Okay. So the big thing is you don't, I mean, since the application is the same, you don't lose the session, for example. Yeah. The session is common to all of them. Yeah. And that can be helpful. Well, that's when you start thinking about en Ember engines, fast boot, and you're starting to tie them slightly together when you stop thinking together, if you think about it. But, uh, yeah. Well, they're, they're different. But yeah. I know, but it's... They're both different. Yeah. 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 Okay. We could potentially look at it. As I said, we're always rewriting. That's the thing is, with this and the front end, because it's front end, you can rewrite quite a lot. We've just got to convince five teams that we're actually going to rewrite all together. We just need to figure out Andy, how to get the uh, Ember message out into the corporate community. Because I think I mean, to, to become a, I mean, Tom made earlier, kind of trying to get a reaction out of the crowd, but like, you know, what I would love to see is, you know, corporate buyers buy things that are safe, right? Yes. And, and, um, and, and, and Angular is safe because it's got huge Lots CI of, to it. exactly. And, um, so, and yeah, maybe that doesn't, Ember doesn't ever have to hit the corporate stock sector. I mean, that's possible, but it would be nice if it, if, it, if it did, because I think that, that kind of sponsorship has. So the last, I think we did, uh, we sponsored Ember Camp, Ember Camp last year. Right. Uh, so that was actually quite easy to do. I was, I was quite amazed that our corporate supporters, I said, oh, that's fine, yeah, we'll support that. That's, it's not that much money in comparison to the amount of money we do spend on okay. stuff. No, no, but it's, it was a part of the sponsorship, you know, so I think we became platinum, or I can't remember which one we went for, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that support is fine, it's, then it's getting out into the community to tell other people that what we're doing, because it's, it's fine, but we are actually, it's limited what we can do that's actually far out and innovative, because we still have to do the, the actual s stuff that actually gives us the money to actually run the site, sure. in but effect. If you have success, Centric can, can now say, I'll, I'll use Ember. I mean, those, those yeah. guys, British Gas did, right? Yeah, so British Gas do. The other, the other team that uses it uh, is another part of British Gas, which is uh, Connected Homes, which is the hive heating stuff, yeah. if you ever heard the adverts on TV yeah. and everything. But they've gone for Angular because they had a, that was a recruiting thing. They said, right, how can I get people in now to do this work? I know you're using Ember. I can't be asked about that. I'm going to go for Angular because I can get people now. And that's the main thing. And the more people that use Ember, I think the corporates will stop putting people in. Even though the guys that are using Angular or have used Angular switched quite quickly to Ember. I just saw something on Twitter about someone actually doing an Ember Angular to Ember training course from someone, in, uh, I think it was Tom Dale, I think posted that on, the, on Twitter at the moment. So that would be, you know, stuff like that would help. Equally, something that we really benefit from is employers encouraging their people on their teams to come out and give talks about the, the things they've been working on, the techniques they've discovered, how they found onboarding to Ember and how they convinced their company to make the bet on it. Yeah. So for anyone working in a bigger organization, <coughs> it would be a thing to say at all, as we always say, uh, five minutes is a fantastic way for a talk. And, I, and I, think, uh, I think yourselves and Deepan have been talking about getting corporates out to, to come out to us, because we can come out, you can come out if you want to come out to Staines, that's where we are. So if you want to come out to Staines and have a look what we're doing, I think we can organize something. That's, that's the thing. So if it's a corporate thinking about trying to use Ember, if you come out to Staines, you can see the way that we've actually implemented it. And we've been using it now for a, a year and a half. In anger. That's it. Thank you.